the more you look at the world and you start questioning things, you're like, a lot of what Super Earth is telling people does just does not make sense with what you're seeing everywhere. Okay, hey, watch you watch yourself. You kind of can tell, like, you're right starting now. to sound like a traitor. Oh shit! Hold on, someone's at my door. When I say this game has the most solid gameplay I've played in a while, that is not an understatement. This game is straight action packed, has crazy, crazy fluid movement features. All right. Nothing like diving off a mountain and ragdolling all the way down it just to get away from a fucking single jumping bug. OK, dude, this game feels so good, so fluid when it comes down to the gameplay of it. Um, the only thing I wish is what you will probably hear me and Jameer complain about the most if you ever watch us gameplay wise is just the fact that like dodging mechanic wise I feel like they need to add like a little something whether it's a like a roll or like I think Jameer was saying something about a sidestep just to give us a little bit more survivability for for us people who just suck at this game you know what I mean yeah so I was thinking like I 100% think it's intentional the way they have everything right now I, honestly, I, I don't think it's like detrimental that they don't have any dodge mechanics or anything besides the diving mm -hmm. but i think it would be dope <laughs> if there was an option for like a quick sidestep some of the hunters like the bugs that jump on you they will literally like track you through the air in your dive and just hit you instantly when if i say like a quick sidestep or something i think that would be fire but i can when completely I... understand why there isn't an option like that it makes it more it gives more to the, it's the survival <laughs> aspect of it yeah. well no I, I will say that when it comes down to god the tracking enemies these guys will track you for fucking miles they have the prediction of gods all right you could think you're dodging out of something and they will know exactly what you're thinking and exactly what you're planning yeah the um, enemy ai is actually kind of ridiculous <laughs> yeah in some cases it's too ridiculous like with the robots for example they have their heavy artillery and he'll go to put down like a hell bomb or something or a turret and that heavy art the heavy artillery will literally track where you're gonna put it and blow it up the second that shit spawns in yeah <laughs> that thing has like laser pointer aim it will not let you get anything off yeah nothing like the you throw that shit down and they're like we see this big ass laser in the sky <laughs> and they just fucking swarm your shit oh yeah they will actively move out of the way your orbitals they will not let your turret stay alive like they are actually aware of the shit you're dropping in the environment yeah when it comes down to the enemies in this game and in regards to the gameplay aspect of it these enemies i don't care what difficulty you're on it is terrifying every encounter always has you on the edge of your seat like no matter what i feel like you're just sitting there getting swarmed when me and jameer went back to play with some of our lower level friends on like a uh, lower difficulty compared to what we were playing on we were just like when the fuck did they put these in here <laughs> we were sitting there and you're all arrogant because we're like oh we're level 20 oh. <laughs> we're going back to medium blah blah, blah. But, that probably is what got us killed but at the same time it was like damn like damn, we're still really two-shotting us here yeah i didn't think they could do that on medium <laughs> yeah. but overall gameplay wise like i said the the enemies are crazy and the movement mechanics and everything feel like so fluid and like so on point um and honestly like every encounter like i feel like by the end of it leaves me with a little bit of ptsd bring me back to Male malevolent creek and it's fucking over bro i'm just cowering in a fucking quarter <laughs> now nah, this game does a really good job of making every encounter really tense mm -hmm. uh the different enemy types they in introduce throughout the difficulties as you increase them uh i think makes it more interesting it makes it feel less uh, repetitive because basically in a nutshell the game is just horde mode uh, but uh -huh. they do a good job of mixing it up mixing it up enough that doesn't feel like you're doing the same thing over and over again yeah it's not like as repetitive as you think it would given like all the like the special world effects the random pois the different factions like every every time you drop in it just feels like an entirely different encounter it's just like everything's fresh kind of like new like there's always like something crazy going on and you know if joel's not planning on ruining your day that day he'll do it another day oh yeah joel is like the 
the dungeon master or one of the lead level designers that decides to ruin people's day when you're spawning in a certain map. So that's another thing we can talk about really quick. Um, this game has a community aspect to it where the entire community is working together to liberate a planet. So you'll see a liberation percentage that says like 90%. And the entire community is working on that one planet or multiple planets actually to get them all to 100 percent to win this intergalactic war you guys are in and i think that aspect of it is honestly what i think will carry this game for a long ass time oh, it's the whole community working together the whole aspect of like joel the level designer sabotaging and then we know that there's like more vehicles weapons and stuff coming in the future i think that along with the main core gameplay loop of this is going to carry this shit for a very long time a 100 percent dude like the, the community aspect of it like if me saying malevolent creek i bet 80 percent of the people who play the game and jump in here and watch this review will know exactly what i'm talking about you could just point, like the creek. put the ptsd image on my face right here okay <laughs> yeah overall gameplay i don't really have any complaints like there's minor things like obviously like we said the dodging but overall i think the gameplay loop is solid i think the overall gameplay is solid i think ai is solid enemy variation is solid the variety mm -hmm. is solid i don't yeah, really have I, any, I have absolutely complain no complaints about. like I'm searching I, for something they complain about but i don't really have anything yeah me searching was just like maybe they just add this little mechanic which would just make me live a little bit longer <laughs> which isn't like it's not a big deal we can have a dodge mechanic yeah, yeah whatever uh, it's just like it's just me being a bitch <laughs> <laughs> so the whole game is procedurally generated procedurally generated <laughs> so every single level when you land on every single mission is going to be a randomly generated environment which honestly if no one told me i wouldn't even know the way that all everything works everything looks it looks like it's entirely like handcrafted the placement of things looks handcrafted like i haven't ran into any weird like like how did the computer put this building on top of a rock and we can't get to it like there's nothing like weird like that that's in there uh the environments are all like varied uh they have different environmental effects everything looks varied there's not really much repetition i would say uh you have like the spores creating like weather effects and like haze and shit throughout the entire map the think, random pois that they just decided to add on yeah the random points of interest and in, like quote unquote side missions that you could do in the maps the bases you can run into like there's so much shit everywhere that it's like i think it's solid yeah my my opinion is even though like everything is like randomly generated and, and whatnot i just think like they put so much attention attention to detail into like the small stuff in the levels that it's actually kind of insane that like there's like no issues when when it's randomly you know designing mm -hmm. for each drop like bro i have to say like there's small like attention to detail the jellyfish when the lightning storm hit that one time we played i was yeah the jellyfish started awe. producing their own lightning yeah and it was only happening during the lightning storm so there mm -hmm. was just like a weather effect that just went crazy and yeah, there like, there's was these creatures jellyfish. on the planets already besides like what you're fighting against and they're just kind of doing their own thing they're not really worried about you it just gives the planet's life it makes it feel like it's actually like a a place that exists and the fact that the weather changes and the time of day changes on the maps and stuff like that too yeah the and like even with like the weather effects like it's not like it's like across the entire map it, it kind of like comes and goes at times mm -hmm. it's like it's 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 really really crazy the, the level of like detail they put into like even like the simple stuff um and the i think in my opinion like each faction having like it's like having its own effect on each world like it just brings like an entirely different feel to it every single time you know what i mean like dropping into the bot planet is like you would think that like certain like certain ones are like completely industrialized and just like barren and then other ones are like okay they might have like just started here and like there's still like some wildlife going on and all this other stuff it's like i don't know it's just crazy to me one thing I noticed, I don't know if this is just a headcanon, but for the bots, for example, if we drop into a planet where they have like, it's like 0.5% liberated, like we haven't touched it. Uh -huh. I feel like when you land in those environments, the bot planets are usually mostly flat and they have like a grayness throughout the entire thing that looks like mm. more machine. Whereas like the bugs, when you land on their planets and they're mostly liberated, it looks more like nature's taking over the environment. Yeah, like it, it feels like... I don't know it... if that's my headcanon, but I feel like... <laughs> that's something i noticed but that's a big thing i i think it's so like it has such a unique feel to it that the fact that the community kind of creates its own headcanon with a bunch of stuff in general mm -hmm. like 
malevolent creek being the fucking war zone <laughs> fucking uh like i i feel like every the fact that people are so captivated by like like i feel like the lore and like the levels that like to the point where we're able to create this whole like story driven thing based mm-hmm. on like just based off of community reactions is like crazy to me like i feel like there's not a lot of games i can like a lot of this is based off of like how how the community just got so like sucked into like this world and i feel like that has a lot to do with the level design itself um and another thing on on the maps themselves too like you'll run into like dead hell divers or dead people there that have oh, yeah. like weapons on them and stuff like that or like we were playing earlier today for example they we ran into like a corpse of a bug that we literally have never seen before oh well, yeah. we've only heard about in like lore some like hive mind bug type thing mm. and we ran into like a mech on the ground which we haven't even seen but we know they're being released mm. so there's like subtle foreshadowing that they drop on the environments too and i think that helps because it's all being randomly generated so they can just go in and just be like oh just add this to the map but so it's mm. like their updates along with the the great level design on its own mixed in with like the sparsely sprinkled in lore i think just like adds to like this game this game's like immersion into atmosphere yeah uh, it just brings like a whole different different feel to it like like you said like seeing that that bug that we personally haven't seen but then when you sent me that the video on like the lore stuff and then that popped up i was like no way bro <laughs> like to me it's it's just crazy um like the amount of like small details they put into stuff and the fact that they constantly it feels like they're constantly like dropping these small like little like you said like hints easter eggs like lore related stuff that really like just drives the community's interest like more and more so i i feel like the level design like just plays such a key role not just like it plays a key role in gameplay too like the fact that if you're on a snow planet like you have better odds of like it being freezing temperatures and slowing you down and or and, cooling off your weapons yeah, like, yeah cooling like off your weapons like overall like the level design and like between the level design just being so captivating and on top of it just having the fact that it affects your overall gameplay i i feel like it's just such a great aspect and they did it so well yeah again uh i don't have complaints i was i was looking for something to complain about and i really have i don't have anything yeah i i have absolutely no complaints when it comes to the level design maybe make uh some of the holes more more noticeable so i'm not falling in and losing all my samples I, there, there are random holes on the map sometimes that aren't really <laughs> noticeable it's just random hole that falls into the abyss well they're they're explosive i found that out so if you drop a grenade in there it's like essentially it's like the mini nukes <laughs> so they're just like gas holes so just don't fall into them yeah for real I mean, I think graphics kind of speak for themselves. The graphics in this game are fucking, I, I, they're phenomenal. I don't care like what anybody says. I feel like every single time I'm playing this game, I'm like creating my own cinematic film. Like <laughs> everything just feels like it, like such a such an experience. Everything looks so freaking good, and I feel like even like kind of sitting back and like taking gameplay footage and just re looking over stuff for like some clips and stuff, like. It, I feel like it requires no like special editing or anything to make it look like as good as it does. Like leaving it the way it is, just like you're just leaving it a clip like that of whatever's going on. Doesn't matter what kind of perspective you're on. It just seems like everything is just so nicely like detailed that it's just you don't got to mess with anything. You just drop a clip and boom, it's like watching a movie. Yeah, everything from like the animation to the sound design to like the dust particles flying in the air to like the lens flare to like the, the sky boxes like everything like works together so well that it creates like this crazy cinematic experience just from playing the game it's like this game is literally just as i'm sure people who were like in the gaming sphere have seen like there's clips of this shit everywhere and mm-hmm. it's like it's like made for these cinematic like clippable moments like you could literally turn this game on for an hour and a half and you have like multiple clips that you could share with your friends or multiple crazy experiences Mm-hmm. this game Mother's... is just built for crazy epic moments or just like moments where you guys are just holding down a line and it just looks insane just the amount of gunfire and explosions and just fucking gore and shit flying everywhere it's crazy yeah if it's not if it's not a crazy explosions or some crazy shit then it's just goofy shit you're doing with your friends that still like comes off and looking mm-hmm. hilarious like <laughs> like they, this game is is phenomenal when it comes to the graphics performance wise i will say and when it like when it comes down to it 
um at launch which i would like as much as i want to look past it it's just one of those where like i feel like i have to include the fact there were quite a few bugs between like a bunch of like game crashes between if you went like first person sometimes it would just crash a game um mm -hmm. i think that was like one of like the big ones that i was being affected by because i would just switch into first person a lot and my game would crash get in i'm inside you <laughs> oh my game just crashed. Get us? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they get on miniguns? You good back there? Oh my god, what's that? Oh, he killed me so fast! Yo! Oh! What is happening? <laughs> Yo, that one wouldn't die for nothing! Oh, don't tell me my game just crashed. Did you crash again? I think so. Oh. Uh... Um, and between that and them getting completely bombarded and their servers just getting so overwhelmed that it was just causing so many issues. I feel like it's something that as much as I want to look past it, we can't look past it. Um, yeah, they definitely were not ready for this game to be as popular as it was. <laughs> Which I guess is a good thing their game blew up like this for them, for them like studio wise for what is it, Arrowhead, I believe is the developer. Yeah, good for them that they, uh, they got this publicity, but they definitely were not ready. The servers were down for basically like i think an entire weekend at one point uh, well i i think it, it, it i don't think they were fully down i think it was like they're they were having their issues and then they created a bunch of cues is what happened mm -hmm. um and and that's what i'll say I, I'll, I'll say like yeah they were issues but in all fairness i will say like they acted on it relatively like quick and they were pretty good at keeping like the community updated on everything that was going on yeah they're um, very they're very active on twitter Mm -hmm. um and pretty much every after every server down event they're like oh here's double xp or like here's something to get you guys like like back compensate into you for the fact that you guys haven't been able to play like they've uh, been really on top of just making sure that like people have gotten something if there's an issue that's affected the game on their end or they've been really quick to make updates to fix problems that are like in the game like there was that infinite stratagem glitch mm -hmm. which like this is a pve game that technically doesn't affect anybody but they were really quick to like go in and be like, no, we're not allowing that. <laughs> well, and, and I'll say it, like I said, I, I think the fact that they're like vocally active, one and two, that they're they're pretty they've been pretty quick on like these fixes. And at the same time, they're very like open about like the issues. Like uh, I saw the whole thing on how like somebody like made a comment on Twitter about, hey, like they're about to spend their last bit of money to get the game and they're excited. And then they just responded with like, yeah, like, don't do that because we're still working through our issues. Like for mm -hmm. a developer to straight up say, hey, don't buy my game yet. Not until we fix these issues, it just kind of really shows like their commitment um, into like polishing the business. game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like overall, like it, and firsthand, like I had to deal with like some of these issues between the, the queues and between um like the crashes and stuff but i will say one of the things that this game does fucking phenomenal and i wish more games did this was allowing you if you're playing with friends it, it, if you're playing solo it kind of sucks if you crash because i don't think you can come back to it but if you're playing with friends and say you crash it forces whoever's there to become like the leader so say me and jameer are playing together my game crashes i could just reload in and relaunch back into that game join mid game as if nothing ever happened although it crashed although it crashed although it crashed i'm okay with this Why and let me rejoin and lay let me rejoin and it let me i'm oh, dropping in right now as we speak so if, i'll be totally okay with that because oh yeah i'm here can i land on you <laughs> was that you yeah, I just landed. it. I threw a grenade inside the robot thing and I blew it up. Oh, I think my that God. killed me. Ah. Um, so it, like even if the game crashes, it doesn't cause that much of an issue if you're playing with friends. On top of it, say Jameer's 30 minutes into a thing, he's about to extract and I'm like, hey, you know what? I have a few minutes i want to join in and, and help out play like play a little bit. I could join in mid game even if I wasn't there to begin with like the the being able to just drop in whenever i want i feel like made these crashes and like these performance like issues not as crazy and like like detrimental as as it could have been yeah as far as graphics and performance there were definitely some issues that we ran into but i don't think it's anything 
nothing that makes me want to throw the game out a window or nothing that makes me want to stop playing entirely or anything like that yeah nothing nothing too crazy it, it's really just like i i feel like in the end it was in all fairness it was something that didn't expect to blow up as big as it did was the main issue just a server issue between the crashes and stuff like i said the crash stuff is is pretty like it's, it's not as bad as as like it could have been so i think they did a pretty good job at the quick fixes and everything else so this being mostly a multiplayer game there isn't really much of a single player story to talk about but there are little nuggets they drop in here of the overall lore of the universe that i think they handle really smart for the moment you load up the game they show you basically a political advertisement that they show people on super earth to get them to support and join the helldivers movement Super Earth, our home. Prosperity, liberty. Hi there. <laughs> Democracy, our way of life. Oh, hello. But freedom doesn't come free. <laughs> Sweet liberty. No. <laughs> Look familiar? Scenes like these are happening all over the galaxy right now. You could be next. That is, unless you make the most important decision of your life. Prove to yourself that you have the strength and the courage to be free. Join the Helldivers. And you go through a training course, which is like the canonical training course that the Helldivers go through. And you basically see that the training is like nothing. And even in that training course, you see that they have like captive, like something like captive bugs in that training course. And you're just like, oh, that's interesting. Like if they're able to capture them and control them and they release them for us to fight here, it's like, how did they, how did they get to the other planets and how did they lose control of them? There's just like subtle things like that to make you like slowly question the reality of what's going on in this game. Um, and then as you go through, there's stuff like illegal broadcasts coming from planets that are overrun with bugs. So it's like, how the fuck are bugs doing an illegal broadcast? You find like little like tablets of people just like questioning things in the world. You start to find out like the the cyborgs, for example, in the first game were like half humans, half robots. But in this game, the automatons are all basically entirely robots. There's factions from the first game missing that are like, it looks like there's subtle nods that they're going to be coming back. There's just subtle things in the environment that just hint at an overall narrative that I think are handled really well without them like having like a full dedicated single player campaign to it. I, I think overall, like when it comes down to the story, like you said, it's it's like like more of like the, the small subtle hints, the lore and all that in the background um, and kind of like stuff that like it kind of forces you to actually like play the game and find these little like things, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and for somebody who knows like absolutely nothing about even the first game i feel like snooping around finding the side objectives like finding the little stuff going out of my way to like like kind of like jump on like twitter TikTok, whatever to to find out like other like little things of lore that other people in the community found out i think is like a real unique way to put like a spin on on the story side of things um the fact that it's like a lot of it kind of like keeps me wanting to like play the game more to find out like like these smaller like things allure like earlier talking about finding that big ass mech suit by the worm thing that we haven't seen before had me wanting to like just jump on the twitter and be like yo what the fuck is this <laughs> um but i think overall like uh when it comes down to like the the lore and the story and stuff like it just piques such a unique interest and i feel like it piques like a small interest in like all of the community that, that everyone's kind of just creating their own kind of lore um and when the devs like kind of come out and like drop like more and more hints like to like certain things or or kind of like like you said hinting at the like the broadcast tower stuff and finding out like hey maybe like some of the humans were just like not with us here and we just said fuck it <laughs> um yeah, there's uh, like I, subtle things it's like it shows that like a lot of these people are indoctrinated to like follow the super earth beliefs and it's like the more you look at the world and you start questioning things you're like a lot of what super earth is telling people 
does just does not make sense with what you're seeing everywhere. Okay. Hey, watch you yourself. You kind of can tell, like... You're right starting now. to sound like a traitor. Oh, shit. Hold on, someone's at my door. Longevity. When it comes to the replayability of this game, honestly, I'm gonna say it's on a whole nother level. Uh, like I said before, between like each encounter, uh, all the special effects, and you know having good old Joel come in and create his own mess of chaos. <laughs> Not to mention the non-stop shenanigans that like you can have with your friends while you're playing this game. I feel like it's something that is gonna keep me coming back in the later future. And that's something like I feel like I get very bored of like certain games like easily. But this was, yeah, like there's games where I'll play and I'll be hooked on it for like uh, maybe like a few days to a week and then I just never come back to it again. This game by far has me wanting to come back over and over and over again just to progress, just to see the, the little things like going on in the game or just to fuck around with my friends. That's really all it is. Um, Girl, we be sitting there like, oh, let's it's like, man, we got to make a video and it's like, let's just get some hell divers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have been using hell divers as a as a way to to just really kind of uh stray away from our constant post so we apologize this game was just that good <laughs> this game been distracting us yeah it's been it's been really really crazy um but like in terms of like the the replay replayability like on top of it the fact that i like i'm not 100 percent sure i'm pretty sure like you, you may know more but they were saying something about like the future updates being free um, yeah, I'm pretty. I think they said the future uh, campaign updates are going to be free. I'm not sure if that means every bit of DLC that they drop will be free, but as we've seen in the game so far, like even the quote unquote battle pass they have, you can buy with in game currency, and the system is like extremely fair compared to some other games that we've seen, like other live service products. Like you can go through this entire game not spending a single dollar, just using only in game currency and just time played and you can get everything and the the level system you're rewarded very fairly like you can level up really fast it's not like the leveling is super slow where you're just like oh damn i'll just buy it nah it's like it's it works i would say like older multiplayer games work where you can actually level up and buy everything without having to worry about dlc yeah it doesn't feel like a con it doesn't feel like as much of a grind that that it con like i feel like it looks like it might be like a grindy game but it's not it's it's actually like super fair in the leveling system which makes it so like every single time you kind of like clear out like the areas and stuff like you're always having something new to unlock um like right now we just we just hit level 20 and i think there's i think once you hit 20 you kind of like unlock most of the stuff there but even now it's like we still haven't unlocked all these other things that we're still kind of like working towards to to like kind of just see like their effects the usefulness we're kind of just doing our own thing and buying stuff how we want um on top of it it's just like if the future updates like like you said are or like might be free we don't know like entirely if everything's gonna be free but the fact that so far it seems like them dropping what the new weapons the mech slater the vehicles yeah, it looks like the vehicles the new weapons the, new enemies like it's gonna be crazy the, yeah possibly the third faction from the first game the illuminate yeah. uh maybe coming as a free update but we're not entirely sure but assuming they do drop it as a free update or maybe a part of the battle pass or something i think I think as of now everything they've done has been completely fair yeah and, and in all honesty it's like let's be completely honest for a 40 dollar game yeah 40 what, 70 60 70 dollars now 40 dollar game one this game has been more polished even with its issues has me coming back for more in regards to gameplay like for 40 dollars like if they were to ask me to pay like 20 for the like the, the the next dlc i would do it in rb just because of how good this game was um but the fact that they're possibly willing to do it for free says even so much more about how like dedicated they are i feel like to this like community on top of it like jameer saying in regards to their premium credits and stuff like i'm someone who didn't drop the money to get the premium stuff right and maybe in the last game we just played in their superstore they had like their little armor set that looked really fucking cool and i was like you know what the way that you can get the system just by play like or the premium credits just by playing the game is so fair that i was like you know what i'm just gonna buy this armor that's only in the store for a few days 
because I know I'm going to be able to get the premium like package just by playing the game a little bit more. Like it's crazy on how on how much like other games have kind of put the whole microtransaction thing into this whole crazy thing where you're spending 20, 30 bucks for a simple cosmetic or or like the the DLC pack or or the battle pass. And here it's just like, bro, like you can spend like five bucks and get like a whole fucking superstore done. You know what I mean? Like buy everything in there. Like I, I think they did a real great job at it. With this game coming and knocking, like basically beating everybody, becoming the most played game on Steam. Mm -hmm. With like five hundred thousand concurrent players or some crazy number like that. Mm -hmm. Like I, I hope that the way this game handles the quote unquote microtransactions, DLC, live service type thing, I hope other developers look at this and be like, hey, like maybe yeah. we should make it like fair. <laughs> to yeah. be able to level up and buy things because then ironically it would make the community want to actually go back and like buy other things in the game <laughs> if you like drop a half-ass game that's like 70 dollars and i have to pay 40 more dollars to get like extra content and then i still don't have all the content after paying for that it's like bro what yeah. are we doing no and that's the whole thing i think i think the big big thing with the with their entire thing is like i don't like games with microtransactions i'm gonna be honest i'm someone who spends a shit ton of money on microtransactions for games because i want the the extra you know cosmetics the battle pass this that but when it came I down play, to like i play a lot of card games i'm used to like fucking microtransactions out the ass but like yeah I, it's really getting it's getting kind of to a breaking point in certain games now it's like you play an FPS and it's like in old times you'd be able to level up your gun and just get a new gun. But mm -hmm. now it's like they make well, the leveling process so ridiculously difficult because they want to spoil you to buy some fucking battle pass. Listen, I spent seventy dollars on COD. Their DLC comes out and they introduce new broken weapons where it's like, hey, you have to unlock it in the battle pass and you won't have access to it until after the battle pass is done, which is usually like two months or something like that. And then you have to do specific challenges to unlock it then. So it's like you'll have access to it, just not when it's at its most broken peak. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just say when it comes down to this, like they did a fucking fantastic job at it. When it comes to the replayability, I, I see myself coming back till they decide to drop these servers and say hey you know what new game coming out and we just can't like keep these servers up <laughs> yeah i would say if they keep if they keep adding like mechs enemies new weapons all that shit, and they basically keep the community interaction they have right now they keep their uh, live service aspects fair like they are right now with the current gameplay loop and everything they have and everything they're going to be adding i could see this game being around for a minute like yeah i i like it's to the point where we're not, when we're not playing it i want to be playing it so yeah. <laughs> all right so with all that said just gonna give a few final thoughts so honestly i think for me personally out of every game that we've played this year i think this is honestly my favorite one this is the one that i could see me going back to and playing for like the remainder of the year um, I know we got some bangers coming out throughout March and throughout the rest of the year, but this is a it's definitely going to be up there for me in terms of like games of the year, game of the year contenders. Um, I don't really have many complaints. I think they've done a really good job here, um, and I just hope to see hope to see them improve, add things in the future. And yeah, this is this is a really solid game. One of, probably one of the best live service games I've ever played, honestly. Yeah, overall, in my opinion, like. Like I said, for me, I rarely come back to some games and, and sometimes it's like I really have to force myself to, to like grind out through certain things. But this game just is phenomenal. It, it had such a different feel. It brought me back to like my old gaming days where where I genuinely like was having fun, like just playing with friends, having a grind. For real, bro. And like I was like, kind of jaded on games. This game kind of like yeah it turned me back into like a fucking little ass kid <laughs> yeah like i was like i was playing games right like over like the last like few years and i'm like bro like can we get kind of boring like nothing nothing feels the way like it used to and they brought this game out and i swear to god i'm like yo fuck all my responsibilities i'm about to to stay up late fuck sleep <laughs> like like grinding like the game not, not even that it's a grind but just just overall the, the game itself has such a unique feel it's so good and it just kind of gives you like that that nostalgia of like what it felt like to really enjoy a game and uh, i feel like it's been so long and and at a fair price you know what i mean i feel like it's been so long like that we've had something like this good 
and like this fair come out so and like I, just... I don't even be playing multiplayer games like that like i i mostly play single player like narrative driven games or like rpg games i almost never play multiplayer games maybe uh, ask me to play shit all the time but i never yeah. <laughs> the amount of times i've been trying to get this man to play any kind of like cooperative game with me no hands down doesn't happen <laughs> Bro, I'd be playing card games, RPGs, fighting games, or like single player games. I don't if play you, like anything other than that. But like, if you check this out the rest actually, of our videos, they are single player related games for a reason. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I do like third person shooters a lot. There's just not many third person multiplayer third person shooter multiplayer games out right now that are like super solid. But this is definitely one of them. I hope this starts a resurgence. I hope we see more third person shooters come back. But no, yeah, overall, like like I said, this game, I can't really complain much about it. Uh, I really hope that they keep it going, and I can't wait to see what they bring in the future. Would you say it's worth your dime and your time? Psh, it is worth all the dimes and all the time. Waking every day, I don't see shit change. Trying to figure out what I can do about it. Trying to put my crew on, but the shit is too small. Maybe it's a stretch, nigga. We could even rock it. Yeah, we got to lift off, but the shit is too slow. Lily, y'all been feeling like this motherfucker stalling. Seeing rock bottom and the sight is so appalling. 